Hill's version of sexuality and reproduction was it's better to be single and keep your time and energies and efforts completely on the father and and not marry. Because if you marry, all your time, efforts, and energies will be on your spouse. And I just think back in the very first, quote, father of the faith, Abraham, and how he was married and somehow he thought about the father and got close to him through obedience. So one thing that's clear in Paul's writings in 1 Corinthians 7 is he believes marriage is a second best choice to singlehood, even in a world where the first edict the father ever gave to mankind was to be fruitful and multiply. That's in Genesis chapter 1, 27 and 28, before the fall. As we pointed out on this channel many times, Paul often gives us inversions of the Father's law. And in this regard, Satan's point in using Paul was to reverse the Father's command to be fruitful and multiply, especially as it applies to his people. That is to say, those who believe on his son, Jesus Christ, and those who want to keep the commandments. So that's why Paul taught not to keep God's law, not to keep the commandments, and also anybody with a heart for Jesus. Let's go ahead and stand in the way of their reproduction is is how I see it now as a satanic conspiracy that he was a minion for. So why would Satan want this? Any general in a war wants to limit enemy combatants. Why wouldn't he want to stop believers from procreating and raising up into the world those who would end up being highly trained believers? who had grown up hearing the word and seeing examples of the word lived out in their parents. Paul's statements in 1 Corinthians 7, which magnify remaining single as a better outcome, as well as reframe marriage as a selfish obsession with sex and turns marriage into a relationship of submission and idolatry of the other spouse through overmuch service and focus on service to the other, rather than learning together to be obedient to God's word and to honor and worship the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ and then to live lives in the order which God has established. Yes, the man is the head of the family. Paul wasn't wrong about that, but his single-minded focus on service to the other over service to the father first disrupts the order of things. The father's original intent for marriage was to produce offspring and to help each other grow in love. That is to say, in the keeping of the commandments and to teach following generations the same. We remember in 1 John, it says this is how. We know we love the children of God when we love God and keep the commandments. So, of course, Paul takes your mind off what real love is, that is keeping the commandments, and makes this nebulous form of love, which is not just the service which Jesus spoke about when he said that uh, the greatest among us would be the least and servant to all. Yes, we do that. But also a type of slavery to, to your spouse, where he tells one spouse to be in complete and utter submission to the other, that is the wife to the husband. And then at the same time, The man is supposed to die to his wife, essentially, as Jesus died for the church. And that, too, is an overmuch inflation of what it really means to live in service. Service starts with keeping God's commandments, first and foremost, in terms of the way we love the Father and how we love each other. Paul's promotion of singlehood as the better choice argues that the single person can make his or her life's entire focus in service of the Father thus implying that singleness is the more selfless choice and that marrying is a more selfish worldly pursuit, something that is only really necessary to quell the fires of lust that burn in the single person. I will argue in this podcast that this selflessness Paul is promoting is not selflessness, but selfishness. And you could see that in people that remain single over time, including yours truly. You get more set in your ways. You get less in service of others. Um, Yes, you can go out and serve others, and I do do that, but it's different when you have a family and people to look after. Even when I was looking after Samson um, in his whole life, you know, there's a type of humility that comes with service that you gain by having a family. Um, Just His claims as to what singlehood really entails are not so when one considers that disobeying the father itself is selfish by default. The father's edict to be fruitful and multiply, along with many other scriptures in which the word promotes marriage, such as he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. And in Jesus's own words, what God has put together, let no man tear asunder. Those scriptures are there for a reason. Why does the father put to get, put together people in marriage, as Jesus said, while Paul discourages it? This is not to say that some of us don't marry. And that for some of us, it's just not meant to be. But the implication that singlehood would always be the better choice if it were not for sexual desire is a fallacy that actually diminishes the value of an amazingly beautiful act that the father created himself 
for us that is pleasurable and is right when done within the confines of marriage. We're going to dive really deep on all this. I'm going to unpack it all. That's our introduction. But before we begin in earnest, let us pray. Father, we...